Happy Friday, everybody. JW here, Rush Truck Center, Southern Colorado. Today we have a 2019 389 Legendary Black. And so I've been getting a lot of comments and questions on my YouTube channel. I have some very inquisitive people. And uh, a lot of you guys' questions and comments are great. I really appreciate them. Some of them are a little bit harsh, so I wanted to address a few of them. But this one is for a customer in particular on the East Coast who is looking at uh, purchasing a 389 Ultra Loft. Another one. And he was kind of curious about tank configurations. And so I'm going to go through there. And I'm going to also address some other things. Horsepower configurations for the Cummins engines. Just so you can see here, this is the 150 gallon tank on this side. It's from my friend Michael Perez on the East Coast. He's uh, He runs a beautiful fleet of trucks. So you can see how these are laid out. And so what we're looking at doing is maybe pulling this side, the tank box off, or the toolbox off of this side so he can put his hydraulic tank. Now one of the options that we could do is we could stretch this tank out just a little bit further possibly and turn it into a split tank and so the hydraulic tank will be embedded into the uh, truck and keep it a little bit more clean and then you can kind of see how much space you have this is a 280 inch wheelbase 336 gear ratio and it's running 22 five tires and so you can kind of see how the fifth wheel height is as it sits right now the fifth wheel height is at about 49 inches flat. That's unladen. Laden, it'll be about 47 inches from the ground to the uh, top of the plate if the plate were laying flat underneath the trailer. And so there's a couple little questions that are kind of popping up on uh, some configurations. So you can see on this one here, the pipe is a curved 45 degree curved tip cut. And so we have some that are straight pipe, which I like. Uh, you can turn them straight back. Or you can have them be a curve, have them be more of a, a straight curve instead of that 45 degree cut. So again, here you go. The Legendary. It's uh, got a little bit of a gold tinge to it. I've been waiting for the sun to come out so that I can do that. But I've had some... Some guys give me a hard time, you know, why do you take videos on such uh, beautiful trucks without washing them first? And the answer is, is I don't have a wash bay. And so I would love to do that. We're under construction still here at our new facility in Colorado Springs. As you can see, they're, they're actually working on part of the wash bay right there. So hopefully that answers your question. So give me a little bit of grace on that, guys. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about some engine stuff. Uh... Another one of our subscribers has asked me to do videos on 605 horsepower Cummins. This one is the 565 2050 Torque X15. And the reason I don't do... I haven't done any of the 605 horse yet is because I haven't had any. We, we typically only special order those trucks. And I've had some questions and comments about those trucks derating it high elevation or altitude as some would say it a pilot would disagree the difference between elevation and altitude but uh, as you can see here we live at the foot of Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs and what happens is and I just got off the phone with my Cummins rep to get clarification on there because somebody told me that a 605 horse Cummins will derate down to a 565 when you go above a certain elevation and that is not the case and what happens is, is since the air is less thin, the turbo will have a tendency to overspeed. And so the engine will make compensation for that. So it'll actually, uh, you know, derate the horsepower a little bit on the engine to keep the turbo from overspeeding and creating damage. So that's the story on a 605. So the uh, Cummins has made some really fantastic um, changes to that they used to derate way more heavily but they they've had uh, a lot of progression especially since i think he told me 2012 2013 time frame so this one is running an um 
remote lube system and then you can see your jumper ports here now this truck does have disc brakes front to back and one thing you'll notice a lot of guys have been asking me about the disc brakes and the disc brakes do not have slack adjusters so uh, there's less of a propensity to get a DOT infraction due to a slack adjuster being out of regulation so uh, just a quick note there so we did bullet style lights on the top okay this is a 78 inch ultra loft sleeper this truck is a set forward axle 131 inch from the bumper to the back of the cab so it is a long hood let me put led turn signals in the back of the light pods when we do some custom painting we'll, we'll paint these you can do, match the fender or whatever you want battery box air tank polish we put dis, uh, disconnects on all these so this is the location of the Kissling battery disconnect this is the 26 gallon def tank it does have a polished cover it just has uh, that white protective sheet on there and then on this side 100 gallon tank and then so what you can see what we did with this truck is we set the tanks so that they're symmetrical in their and how they're lined up in the back okay these are the Bridgestone M710 road tire and we're running a Peterbilt low leaf suspension on this truck okay and you can see all the load lights and everything so for Michael, Mr. Perez, this is uh, the load light configuration that we would put on your spec, okay? And the tank configuration would be the same. This one is an Arctic Gray Platinum interior, and it does have the rosewood insets in there. Keyless entry. We did put extra lights and switches, and I forgot to show that to you on the outside, but we do extra wiring so you can customize yourself if you like. And there's some extra wiring put down here in the front, and typically underneath the sleeper in the back. You'll see an extra coil of wire up underneath there, but they're all hooked to switches up in the dash. So we got a heated seat. This one here, we took the navigation out, put gauges back in. So if you want to load your dash full of gauges, we could do that instead of the navigation. Some people opt for that. They just like the analog. The nice part about the navigation is it's a little bit, you can put a whole bunch of gauges in there too. So, some of the other questions I've had about the Ultraloft sleeper is, are these cabinets an option? And the answer is yes, they are optioned. List price, they're about, uh, I don't recall, I think they're 900,000 bucks before any discounts. But if that's an option you want, then we can go through that in more detail. We did put an S-bar heater in this truck. As you can see from the outside, it, we did not put an APO on this truck yet. That's we we'll kind of leave that up to the purchaser. So, but you can see here we have the space for your TV and microwave. And this is the business center. So it has the pull-out desk and it lifts up extra drawers I'm a little more partial to the Saharan tan 
but you know to each his own i just like it it seems like grays the more common color and when you see the the tan colors it's a little bit more uh, less common so i guess that's why i like it but then here you have your subwoofer and your pass through and you can see from the outside of the truck we did have the pass through doors for your luggage well there you go guys again my name is JW if you have questions I'm at 970-518-5520 if you like these videos go ahead and click on the orange button in the right hand corner we'd love to have you subscribe and we'll talk to you soon thanks